they can accomplish. Thank you. Next, I'd ask the clerk to call the roll for the meeting. There are 14 present and we have two excused. Alderman Matichek and Alderman Herman are excused. Next, we'll go on to the Pledge of Allegiance. Today, we have Troop 804 with us. The scouts that are going to lead us are Andrew Susha, Cole Damro, Cotter Shirasky, Alex Dilmore, Aidan Foucher, uh, Abram Hopp, Mitch Weber, uh, Dominic Weber, Alex Lewis, and then we have their leaders in the uh, gallery as well, Mr. Lewis, Mr. Shirasky, Mr. Damro, and Mr. Detige. So at this time, please stand, and the scouts will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you for coming this evening, gentlemen. Good job. Good job, guys. The next item before us is item 1.3, the approval of the minutes from our last meeting. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Move to approve. Second. Been moved and second to approve those minutes. Is there any discussion? See none, will the clerk call the roll? We're going to take a, a voice vote. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Do we have any resignations? Uh, Steve has. Okay, under resignations, uh, City Attorney Steve McLean. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. The first is uh, from Larry Schaefer advising that he's resigning from the Harbor Center Bid Board uh, due to increased business concerns. Alderman Hammond. You have another resignation? Yeah. And uh, Nancy Modre uh, advising that she's resigning from the Historic Preservation Commission Housing Rehabilitation Commission and thanks the, uh, for the opportunity to serve on the committee. Thank you, Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, I move to accept and file. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Then under appoint, uh, council appointments. Uh, <clears throat> the, uh, to the Board of Marina Park and Forestry Commissioners, uh, the ordinance provides that there's one Sheboygan County representative on that board and the county is uh, county board chair is appointing Supervisor Charlie Conrardi. That will lie over. And Scott Lewandowski to be considered for appointment to the Historic Preservation Housing Rehabilitation Loan Commission to fill the unexpired term of Nancy Mudre, whose term expires 4-20-2015. That will also lie over. And Tyler Ott to be considered for appointment to the Business Improvement District to fill the unexpired term of Larry Schaefer, whose term expires 12 31 2014. And that will also lie over till our next meeting. Um, coming up uh, next week is National Police Week from May 11th through the 17th. And at this time, I'd like to call up um, our chief, Chris Domogolski, to give a presentation of the activities of the uh, police department. It's kind of a culmination of his um, annual report and some other programs they're working on. Chris? Good evening. Thank you, Mayor. I just want to start out by saying thanks for inviting me. Obviously, I'm not going to spend a half an hour up here talking, and I could easily do that. Um, so if you want more information, our report is on our website, sheboyganpolice.com, as well as reports from previous years. They're going to try to open up a PowerPoint so I don't put everybody to sleep. But a couple things that I just want to start out with is, is letting everybody know the strategy that we've chosen to employ in Cheboygan from the police department is one that is community-based, neighborhood-focused, and preventative. It's based on partnerships and problem solving. So I think all of those things are, are pretty self-explanatory. Um, some of the things that we know is that crime is not random, and so therefore our patrol should not be either. Quality is more important than speed. What I mean by that is too often um, police departments through technology with 911, et cetera, Is it up there? Okay. 
and we can't get caught up in just running um, from call to call, treating every call like it's an emergency. We have to um, differentiate between what's what's a quality of life matter that we can best handle spending time on and really digging in and f figuring out what the problem is and trying to address that problem rather than just showing up, spending five minutes and moving on without really addressing the issue. Um, relationships matter. I think that's really at the heart of everything that we do, and it's why we do the outreach that we do. It's important that people trust us so that they share information with us and, and so that we can have that relationship to work together to get things done. Um, building and, and maintaining a safe community is not a spectator sport. People need to get involved in their neighborhoods and in their community if they really want to live in a safe community. We can't just focus on responding to crime. We really have to, to do our work upstream and work on prevention. There's lots of areas where everybody can get involved and work at preventing crime. And so we need to remember in what we do that prevention should be first. And then lastly, what everybody at the police department really knows that over the last four years is that the world is changing and therefore police departments must also. We can't keep operating the same way. We have to be open to innovation and dispersed leadership pushing decision-making down. Um, we have to rely on, on the data that we have so that we can best deploy our resources. Like I said, crime is not random. It's concentrated in both the places that it occurs and the people that are involved in it. And so we have to focus on those areas and those people if we want to be successful. The outcomes for 2013 are up on the screen. Basically what it shows is that um, from 2012 to 2013, we had 18% decrease in crime and from 2009 to 30%, which isn't up there. Some of the numbers are, are really remarkable. Burglaries were 187, which is the lowest they've been in more than 30 years. Thefts are, are almost half of what they were in 2009. So we're really heading in the right direction. Um, I would say some of the problems that we have are in our assaults and aggravated assaults. And most of those are related to either alcohol abuse, um, domestic relationships and things like that. So we're doing a lot of work trying to focus on some of those things. I just drew a couple of things up, up like this up here. Two of them, this is an example of, of uh, information that we distribute to the troops every, every couple days, every two or three days, so that they have updated information on where the crime's occurring. They show these at roll call, it both has brief facts on, on all the crime that's occurring as well as maps to show it where it is occurring. So when we tell them that they need to focus on an area, they understand and can see that. And then we do the same things with accidents and you'll see on the accidents, it also shows um, based on, on time and date so that they can get a, a better picture of that. Um, I would give a big shout out to uh, Dave Augustin over there for all the work that he's really done with us and helping us get our information systems up to speed. It's really amazing the things that we've accomplished in the last four years with our data systems. So it's very important for the work that we do. Some of the accomplishments that I'd like to talk about is that in 2013, the police department participated in over 100 outreach activities, including 22 meetings that we held in neighborhoods. Um, we really tried to address some of our core needs with training. And when we did that, we tried to partner with people to save um, a lot of money in doing that. So we partnered a lot with the state of Wisconsin Department of Justice. And one of the trainings that we held countywide for supervisors was on what's called fair and impartial policing. And it really deals with um, understanding biases and, and making sure that we have policies and practices in place to, to deal with that. So all of the supervisors in the Sheboygan Police Department last year attended training on biased policing, which is very rare. And not only that, but this year in, in February, we, we got some grant money from the Department of Justice and we were able to send two um, people, um, Lieutenant Tennyson and Sergeant Zempel to Connecticut where they were trained as trainers in this. So starting tomorrow, they're gonna be training the whole entire police department in biased policing. We held a training um, with, with partnership again with DOJ, they paid for it, and with Acuity who let us use their facilities. And we trained over 150 people on interview and interrogation. Um, the reason that this is important is that about four years ago, there was a court case that changed how interrogations took place and required police to, to um, 
record those interviews. So it's important that they have the proper training so that they understand what the best um, approaches are to that. Um, one of the things that I talked about earlier is our emphasis on problem-oriented policing, something that, that's been around and was found, um, one of the key founders of that was Herman Goldstein, a professor at the UW Law School. The POP Center, we're very lucky in Wisconsin, is located at um, UW Law School. And although it's been defunded, um, it still operates there. And Michael Scott, who's a law professor there, does a lot of work on that. So one of the things that we need to do is make sure all the officers are trained in problem-oriented policing. We had problem um, locating training. So the Sheboygan Police Department partnered with a, a bunch of people, the UW Law School, again, the Department of Justice, um, the Milwaukee Police Department, and the Wisconsin um, Crime Prevention Association to, to put on a POP conference where, um, two-day conference where different um, theories and, and operations and problem-oriented policing are taught. So we've done that now. This year was our third year, and this year we had um, three different people doing presentations and teaching others, so that's really important. And then we also partnered with the state and a bunch of other people to put on um, some training on crisis management um, that came out of school shootings and some of those things. Um, in 2013, we held our first Asian Citizens Academy trying to build a closer relationship with the Hmong community in Sheboygan and, and help them better understand some of our processes and procedures and develop uh, further relationships there. We worked with partners, um, including the municipal judge and South High School to develop a truancy program at South High that's dramatically reduced the truancy rate at that school. We joined uh, the regional human trafficking task force. The importance of that is many, many people are in denial that human trafficking is occurring in their community. It's a terrible crime. Um, so it helps us get the resources that we need to, to really dig into some of these investigations. And through some of those partnerships, we were able to get um, two different people indicted federally on, on those crimes here in Sheboygan and throughout the state. Um, one of our most important partnerships is with the city development and the building inspection. They've been just really incredible partners. Um, one of the things that we did was hold another um, landlord training program last year. So again, trying to focus on prevention and, and give landlords the information that they need to be successful rather than just coming and trying to hit them over the head and get them to, to do the right thing. We really want to work with them and provide them the right information. <laughs> Um, we did updated security surveys of the entire school district, all of the private schools and many of the businesses in Sheboygan that, that asked for that, again, having to do with mass shootings so that they have policies and practices in place um, that can lead to good outcomes. And then the last thing that I have on there is LPO and Southern Police Institute. So this is part of our succession training. LPO is Leadership and Police Organizations. It's modeled after the West Point um, Leadership Program. Um, we've had about half of our department go through it at, at this point. And not only that, but we also, and so does the Sheriff's Department, we sent one of our lieutenants, Scott Middlestadt, to become a trainer. So he's now involved in the training, which opens up that to further spots for our department members to be able to receive that training. Another thing that we did was was um, updated all of our policies, our whole policy manual over, over the last year. So that's a major, major undertaking. And then some of the other partnerships that I'm really proud of, one is the Tavern Safety Coalition. Again, working with business owners to try to, to get them to really step up, and they have stepped up to take control of, of their taverns and their neighborhoods and, and really reduce the workload that we have by instituting good business practices. And then, um, in response to the rise in, in heroin, not only in Sheboygan, but across the state and throughout the country. We're part of a, an initiative that's made up of all kinds of community partners, really to try to spread um, the word about the, the devastating consequences that it has, um, try to figure out where gaps and services are that need to be addressed, and to try to, again, work on education and prevention with, with our young kids to stop it from happening with them.
And then the last thing that I'll mention again is a little bit about what I talked about with Chad, and that's SEPTED. So SEPTED stands for Crime Prevention Through Environmental Design. And one of the things that we did was send three of our officers and Steve Sokolowski from the planning department to be trained in, in the principles of SEPTED so that they're doing good design and, and they're addressing those issues in our community. And the other thing that I would like to say is that we worked with building inspection and in 2013 inspected more than 1,000 parcels in the city to get them cleaned up and to try to correct building code violations. And the importance of that, again, is not to, to hammer or treat anybody unfairly, but it's because of the devastating effects that it can have on our community. And I think this picture really tells the story. You can look at that picture and, and you decide if you came upon that, whether you would want to walk through that or that's an area that you would walk around. So I talked earlier about the importance of us using data to drive some of our decision making. While I believe um, data is, is important, I also understand that perceptions matter. And sometimes the story out there is, is really important. And what I be, mean by that is, do the residents of this city feel safe or are they living in fear because they believe that, that there's more crime than, that, than there really is? And so I think this tells a good picture and explains part of the reason why we've really tried to clean the city up. And I'll just close my comments out here by saying that um, three weeks ago I uh, hosted a meeting of the police executive group in which 34 other police chiefs um, came to Sheboygan for a meeting. And of those 34 people, 12 of them went out of their way to come up and tell me how impressed they were with how clean the city was. So I think we are really making a difference, and Sheboygan is really, really a special, special place. And some people don't appreciate that, but I think all of you do, and we need to keep talking about all the good things that are happening here. Thanks. Chris, thank you very much for that presentation. We appreciate everything that you're working on. Do we have any uh, one scheduled for the public forum today? No, we do not. Okay, next we'll go on to mayor's announcements. To, uh, present a proclamation for municipal clerks weeks uh, whereas the office of city clerk a time-honored and vital part of our local government exists throughout the world and whereas the office of city clerk is the oldest among public servants and whereas the office of city clerk provides the professional link between the, the citizens and the local governing bodies and agencies of government at other levels and whereas the city clerks have pledged to be ever mindful of their neutrality and impartiality and rendering equal service to all. And whereas the city clerk serves as the information center on functions of local government and community, whereas the city clerk continually strives to improve the administration of the affairs of the office of city clerk through participation in education programs, seminars, workshops, annual meetings of their state, provincial, county, and international professional organizations, and whereas it is the most appropriate that we recognize the accomplishments of the Office of City Clerk. Now, therefore, I, Mike Vandersteen, Mayor of the City of Sheboygan, do hereby recognize the week of May 4th through 10th as Municipal <coughs> Clerk's Week, and I'm gonna present this to our City Clerk, Sue Richard. And I also have the privilege this evening of recognizing someone who has given us 31 years of dedicated service at the Senior Activity Center. Marion Health has served as a fitness coordinator at the Senior Activity Center for the past 31 years. She felt that it was a real privilege to work in a place that people chose to come when they retire. She said, what could be better than being paid to help people enjoy their retirement? The retired people that she served are now saying better goodbyes to Marion as she retires. They are happy for her, encourage her to travel and pursue new hobbies and spend precious time with her family and to volunteer. Her class participants are also very sad that they are going to miss their friend of many, many years. 
Over the past 31 years, Marion has given 11,520 swimming lessons, 2,880 line dance classes, 4,320 fitness classes, 480 Zuma classes, that's a newer thing, so, and then 240 hikes. Just an amazing record of, of people that she's touched over those years. <coughs> Plus, she organized many special events, golf outings, and much more. She took this job as a young mother with a toddler so that she could balance the part-time job with raising her family. That sense of commitment has never faltered. Marion was in it for the long haul, did her job well, but she had a healthy balance in her life pursuing other things like golf, tennis, camping, and taking care of her extended family. Marion, please come forward. I have a certificate of appreciation for you. Certificate of Appreciation reads, the City of Sheboygan is honored to present Marion Health the Certificate of Appreciation and Recognition of your 31 years of dedicated service, dated December, uh, from December of 1983 through May of 2014. Congratulations and have a great retirement. Thank you. Thank you. I just want to say thank you so much. I have been blessed to have such a wonderful job wonderful co-workers, wonderful family. Everyone should be as happy as I am to come to work every day. It's just been a real pleasure. Thank you. <laughs> Next, we'll go on with the consent agenda. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to accept and file all our O's, accept and adopt all our C's, and put all resolutions upon their passage. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on items in the consent agenda? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Okay, I'm opening online voting right now. <coughs> Is it there? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Everybody in? She would vote yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Mary Lynn. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. I'm sorry, it should be 14 eyes, but Mary Lynn's having trouble, so 13. Motion passes unanimously. Next, we'll go on to reports of officers. That's items 3.1 through 3.20. That those items will all be referred to various committees. On resolutions, items 4.1 through 4.4 will again be referred to various committees. Under reports of committees. 5.1 is an RC by law and licensing, pursuant to RC 373 of 1314, recommending, recommends that beverage operator's license application 8118 be denied based on his failure to reveal all relevant convictions on his application and his record of violations related to the licensed activity. Alderman Vanderwill. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the RC be accepted and adopted. Second. Thank you for that motion and support under discussion. Is Samuel Sawal here this evening? He is not here. Um, we were concerned about a recent um, pending charge and with the police department negative recommendation, we denied the license. Thank you, is there any other discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll on the motion? Everybody in? Fourteen eyes. Motion passes. Item 5.2 is an RC by law and licensing pursuant to RC 373 of 1314 recommending that the beverage operator's license application 0305 be denied based on his failure to reveal all relevant convictions on his application and his record of violations related to the license activity. Alderman Vanderweel. 
Thank you. I move that the RC be accepted and adopted. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Under discussion? Is Tamara Thompson here this evening? She's not here. Um, she came before our committee with a very lengthy record, and we've asked her to come back in about six months to see if um, things have cleared up. But for right now, we're denying the license. Thank you. Is there any other discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll on the motion? Fourteen eyes. Motion passes unanimously. Item 5.3 is an RC by law and licensees to whom was referred RC 370 of 1314 and recommends that taxi cab driver's license 0328 be denied based on his failure to accurately review all relevant conviction on his taxi cab driver's license application. Alderman Vanderweel. I think I move that the RC be accepted and adopted. Second. Thank you for that motion. And support under discussion. Is Peter Van Dixhorn here this evening? He is not. We um, invited him to our committee on two separate occasions and he did not appear. Is there any other discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk call the roll? Is everybody in? Thirteen eyes. Motion passes unanimously. Alderman, let's see, uh, 5.4 is an RC by law and licensing to whom was referred RC 370 of 1314 recommends that taxi cab driver's license 8428 be denied based on his failure to accurately review all the relevant convictions on his taxi cab driver, driver's license application and his record of violations related to the license activity and his failure to cooperate with the committee. Alderman Vanderweel. Thank you. I move that the RC be accepted and adopted. It's moved and seconded. The motion is before us for discussion. Is Panfilo Escobar here? Um, he did not appear at either of our meetings that we called him in for, so I would make a motion then to refer this back to committee so that we have um, the police department to help with our recommendation. Is there a second to that motion? It's been moved and seconded. The motion is to refer back to the Law and Licensing Committee. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Next, we'll go on to ordinances. Items 6.1 .1 through 6.5 will be referred to various committees. Um, then we'll move on to other matters. City Attorney. 7.1 is a resolution authorizing signing easements for mini storm sewer to be constructed in portions of their property. That'll be referred to the Public Works Committee. 7.2 is an RO by the City Clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending June 30, 2015, and June 30, 2016. That'll be referred to the Law and Licensing Committee. 7.3 is a resolution authorizing the acceptance of temporary limited easements for the Sidewalk Gap Project. That'll be referred to the Public Works Committee. 7.4 is a communication from Community Bank and Trust stating that they've agreed to allow City Hall to modify the first parking stall in the lot owned by Community Bank and Trust with entrance from Center Avenue to make is handicap accessible for those citizens who need access to City Hall with the cost of modifications covered by the city. That will be referred to the Finance Committee. 7.5 is a resolution authorizing application for the 2014 Edward Byrne Memorial Justice Assistance Grant Program Award, local solicitation, and entering into a memorandum of understanding with Sheboygan County. That will be referred to Public Protection and Safety. Next, we have a uh, closed session scheduled. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to convene in closed session on the exemption provided in Section 19851E Wisconsin statutes for the purpose of deliberating the selling of public property where competitive and bargaining reasons require a closed session. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? We'll take a five minute recess and reconvene at uh, 35 minutes to.